Welcome. You're watching Well Traveled Life with Jonathan and Jennifer, and we are in Bali today. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this as it is close to the end of our Indonesian series. a part of the Lesser Sunda Islands and it is just to one side of Lombok and to the other side of Java. It is known for its incredible beaches, the rice paddies, the temples, arts, culture on this amazing magical island. If you're a nature lover, you're going to find waterfalls and rice terraces. If you are a surfer, you've got some of the best surfing beaches out there. If you love arts and the culture, then there is especially a town for you. All right, so let's give you an overview of things to do. I'm going to start with Ubud because I love Ubud. It is probably my best part of the island. And it is a region that includes includes small traditional villages. You'll also find arts and a lot of culture. A lot of the really beautiful temples are there. So Ubud is my starting point and probably the place where I like to stay. You're up in the forest, you're not on the beach, but this is where you're gonna find those little lookout boutique hotels as well as some really nice resorts that are tucked up in the forest. You're gonna have monkeys on your doorstep and this is your natural artsy cultural hotspot. With 87% of its population practicing Balinese Hinduism, Bali is the only province in all of Indonesia that is predominantly Hindu. Therefore, this is the place for those Hindu temples. The Ubud Palace is a great place to get started. This is where the founder of Balinese royalty set up his first temple and palace. This temple just celebrated their 1,000 year birthday and in the 1800s became a mecca for artists who were coming to show off their talents and their skills. The palace has a very nominal entrance fee. You'll stop across the street and you'll be fitted with a sarong to cover your knees. This is a symbol of honor that you would wear when you enter the palace. Don't be surprised when they come to place it around your waist. This is all part of the experience. We were fortunate to be there at a time of the blessing. Blessings were all over Bali. These are small gifts of gratitude and requests for good luck that are placed wherever you would want to leave a message for the gods. And they usually include a leaf, a small bit of rice, and some flowers. The Ubud Palace isn't very large and won't necessarily take you a long time to get through, but do take your time to experience the energy and the peace that you will find there and get to all parts of it. There are lots of hidden nooks and crannies in the back and on the sides. If you're looking for a different kind of a hot spot, head to the beaches. Seminyak is a beach resort town, great nightlife, a hip scene. Uh, that's kind of the happening place. If you're into the beach, Seminyak. And if you like a beach, but you want something a little more laid back, try Kangu. This is a surfer's beach and it has a more laid back atmosphere than kind of the hustle and bustle of Seminyak. And then there are a couple of temples that if you have the chance to get out and see them, they're iconic. You've seen the pictures of them and you should probably go. And the first one is Uluwatu. And this is a cliffside temple with stunning views over the ocean. And it's the iconic Hindu architecture. It's fabulous and should be seen. And similarly, Tanalat is a temple that is actually out in the ocean. It's perched up on these rocks. Again, beautiful views. And there are some restrictions as to times you can go. Obviously, if there are any kind of services or anything going on there, then visitors aren't welcome at that point in time. But it is just a beautiful structure to take pictures of. You can't miss that, right? You're going to find Bali to be more developed than some of the other Indonesian islands. That's going to translate to it will feel cleaner, the roads will be better, traffic is easier to manage, and you'll have more lodging, restaurant, and tour options. 
Because the cost of living is really low in Bali, it is a common place for expats to want to go live, but it also makes it a great place to go visit. You can find the most expensive resorts in the world here, but there's also really good lodging at all price levels. If you're coming just for a short period of time, I would set an itinerary and you're gonna to have to make some decisions. You can't do the beach and Ubud and surfing. You can't do it all in a day. So you'll need to make some choices and then you'll need to decide to come back. While we were in Bali, we did temples. We chose Ubud as our home base because we really wanted to get up into nature. We wanted to be able to experience the culture. So we hired a driver and I would highly recommend that. It will not be expensive. You can get a driver for a full day. They speak English, they know their way around. They've got great cars. You don't have to worry about that. And all of that can cost you less than $100. That's an incredible deal. I'm gonna suggest make sure you tip at the end of that because the driver probably is not working independently and they're having to give a fair amount of that money away. So make sure that you tip the driver so that they get their portion as well. And with those prices, we can afford that. Then Pasar Bali, we are still driving on the way to the Ubud, yeah? On the Ubud, one of the best place in Bali with Mr. Jonathan and Madam Jennifer from <laughs> Texas. A very nice country, yeah? America, yeah? Thank you for coming and visiting us here as your best vacation. We work together as a team to make the guests happy. In our day, we really wanted to see temples and our driver took us to see both Hindu and Buddhist temples, which was really interesting. And we'll show you a little bit of the difference and a lot of the similarities. We also hiked rice paddies, went to see waterfalls, stopped by makakes on the side of the road and did a little bit of shopping because that's going to be the other thing. Bali is an arts center. Indonesia is an arts center. There are traditional crafts using wood, basket weaving, textiles and fabric. And there are so many iconic Balinese designs that are just tempting to want to take home with you. This is the place where I go for gift shopping. And this is also a place that I brought home just some terrific souvenirs. The Siking Rice Terraces in Tagalaling are north of Ubud, and it's not a terribly far drive. Once you get there, there is a restaurant at the top, some small vendors and shops, and then there are pathways down that you can climb all the way down the rice terrace and then back up to the other side and there's a pond on the other side of the rice terrace. Keep your eye out for folks who live along the terraces and are continuing to work the land. These are ancient irrigation systems that were brought over by those original Bali royals. It's a bit of a trek up and down and remember the weather is hot so bring plenty of water. This is also where you can do the Bali swing which is a beautiful swing out over the open terraces. There's a good chance you're going to be really grateful for the shade. Uh, this is from Bali, yeah. Uh, cake from Bali, Pia, yeah. Pia Punama chocolate. This is my favorite Pia pie in Bali. I'm almost having this one every day. After our snack, we went to the Teganungan waterfalls and again did some hiking, went down to the pools where you can go swimming. If you'd like to spend an entire day, try the Oma Day Pass, which will take you into the resort and give you the day with restaurant, bar facilities, a swimming pool, and lush backgrounds. 
it's a lovely natural area and the waterfalls are just gorgeous. But again, there is some hiking involved, so bring water. Passing by the world-renowned and iconic you see Silver Gold Company where you can go jewelry shopping for some of the finest Indonesian jewels. We headed back to Denpasar and stopped in at a Buddhist temple. This is the site of the largest Buddhist temple in all of Bali. It is phenomenal. As it is in the port of Benoa, it has been dedicated to the deities that involve travel, water, and safety. there a family was visiting and practicing feng sheng which is the release of caged animals as an act of kindness to bring mercies and spiritual karma so much for watching today we hope you loved Bali as much as we did this is one of those islands you just can't get enough of we'll be back and I'm hoping you'll make your way there as well